play. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, to the Chapter Leadership Connect uh, this afternoon. It is March 4th, 2022, and we are talking about how to make filling out the annual report super easy. Uh, it should be unintimidating. I know it, it's kind of it kind of looms large in a lot of people's sort of uh, brains, but it really shouldn't. Uh, in fact, you could even use it like at the end of a calendar year to help you plan for your next year. It'll ask questions that you kind of want to use to get your uh, year in order. So um, we're going to just jump right in. Thank you all for your time. I am going to share my screen. So bear with. So where can you find the annual report? First, go to wai.org and then chapters. And I'm also going to say that every chapter uh, that is an official chapter, if you're a provisional chapter, you don't have to do this. Um, if you're a provisional chapter that is way past your deadline to become an official chapter, I'm going to ask you to do it. But the general rule is if you're an official chapter, whether you're in the United States or Canada or Africa or Asia, yeah, if you're an official chapter, you absolutely need to do this. And we need it by April 30th of each year. So just to make it easy, that um, annual administrative fee that um, should accompany it is $160, $135, also due on April 30th. And that will pay for your insurance for your chapter. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to chapters. And then over here on the right hand side, you're going to go down to chapter resources. And the most wonderful, magical website land is going to open with all a million kinds of um, resources and tools for you to use as you manage your chapter. Uh, way up at the top, annual chapter requirements. By April 30th, pay your administrative fee and you can click here and that's gonna give you, you can go pay it by credit card. Um, you can send a check. Uh, you can also use your rebate funds and you can send an email if you wanna use rebates. Um, you, then the second uh, bullet is submit your 2022 annual report using these easy forms. So if you click there, annual reporting checklist is gonna open and you can actually fill it out right here online and then save it. I'm not gonna do that online because I don't want my internet to choke. So I'm actually going to stop sharing for a second. I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna open it on my hard drive. Um, and you can, from that screen, you may also save it to your hard drive and fill it out there. Um, I'm gonna share my screen again. So here's the report in uh, Adobe Acrobat um, so that you can actually fill it out, actually check, it's a checklist. So us, us aviation people are very comfortable using checklists and just start at the top. You know, First thing you need to do, go to wai.org and make sure your chapter listing is correct. Everything from your logo to who you want to be contacted for people who um, are looking for your chapter, things like that. Um, complete your annual chapter agreement. And what that is, I'm gonna scoot, scoot along page two is the annual chapter agreement. And this is, oh golly, look, I even have a formatting issue. So I'm gonna go fix that after immediately after this call. And um, this is essentially the contract between your chapter and WAI headquarters. Uh, I've got a couple of people checking in. So I'm gonna invite them to be panelists. Um, so read it, please read it every year. Um, it's going to give you some clarity in terms of what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. You're not allowed to fly. This is our agreement that you understand that. Um, you can't fly as part of a chapter activity because we're not insured for that. So, uh, this, I just want to be super clear. I believe in having expectations clearly spelled out. So you sign this and you send this in with your uh, chapter report, your annual report. I will fix this. I will fix it online as well. And then I'm gonna sign it when it's all done and send it back to you. Page, I'm gonna go back to the checklist now. So I'm scrolling back up to the first page. 
So complete the annual report to include all of these things. So your address, contact information, your incorporation currency, so your state or country, uh, whatever you are, wherever you're required to file. If you need to um, do that annually, you just wanna make sure that it's always up to date. Um, this is kind of your reminder, use it as your checklist. Have I done everything? Have I filed everything I need to with the state? Um, evidence of your tax exempt current uh, status, currency, if you're not uh, participating in your group ruling. Okay, those are some kind of lots of words to say, hey, if you're a student chapter and you fall under your university group ruling, send me that letter that says that. Uh, in the handbook, we give you verbiage for your university legal staff or administration to use, slap it on your letterhead and send it on back to me with your annual report, please. Um, and then it's gonna ask some questions about what you did for the year past in terms of membership drive, educational mentoring, and what you're gonna do for the coming year. So I'm gonna jump into that. And that's really what this report is, is what are you, who are you? What's your current contact information? Who are your current uh, officers and what's their current contact information so that we can be sure that we're communicating with the right people? What'd you do last year? And let me tell you why that's important. The IRS, to maintain our nonprofit status, the IRS wants to know that we are fulfilling our commitment to um, the charter that they approved our nonprofit status under. So we're an educational nonprofit. And so we've got to show them that our chapters are out there fulfilling that need. Um, and then what are you doing next year? So, or in the, you know, in this coming year. So uh, it gets a little bit um, confusing, I, I grant you, but um, it's, it's really simple. Don't let it intimidate you. The first page, very, very important. Uh, annual report for the year ending March 31st, 2022. Who are you? What is your permanent address, your street address? So the IRS, the address that the IRS sends your stuff to, if you're in the United States, if you are outside of the United States, where does your government send your stuff to? Uh, and why is this important? We, I will keep referring to our insurance. Every year I have to send our insurance company a list of chapters and your addresses so that you have insurance. So I'm gonna refer to this document every year to make sure I have your current mailing address so that you can actually be insured for your activities. I do recommend that it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> a PO box uh, or another generalized, you know, some post offices will have like a street address so you can receive packages and stuff there instead of using your home address um, because, you know, the officers are going to change. So <clears throat> Jacqueline, Linda, from time to time, you know, somebody's going to replace you eventually as in your role as the, you know, leader of your chapter. So um, you don't still want all the chapters IRS documents coming to your house, you might not even live there. So you want to be sure this is an address that can stand the test of time. Um, the chapter meeting location. Okay, so I get it. In the time of COVID, uh, and, and actually, you know, just a good rule is that we move meeting locations around. So you can put, very, you very much you can put in there, times, locations, and dates vary. And that's exactly what I'm going to write on the website. When we, if you look at your web, your listing on the website, it talks about where your meetings are. If you want to direct people to your website to find out about current events, write that in there and I can put that in there for you. Um, we list a contact person on the website if people want to join. So put, tell me who that is, what their phone number is, what the email addresses you want to use. If you have a website, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, you know, WhatsApp, whatever it is you're using social media wise online, um, let me know what that is because we can post that on your listing uh, on WAI.org. So um, if you need another to attach another page, no problem. Also, is it current? This is a good reminder, go back to your website. I, I bet if we looked at half of the chapter's web pages right now, 
they might even have events back from early 2020 or 2019 because COVID's really kind of, you know, sort of put a little hitch in all of our giddy ups. So um, go back and make sure all of your online stuff is accurate and current. Um, if you are a student chapter, you are required to have a chapter advisor, faculty, staff uh, advisor, and that person should needs to be a WAI member. So I need to know who that person is, what their phone number is, and what their email address is, because we communicate with them regularly. And that person is the constant, right, between semesters. So whole, sem whole chapter officer rosters will graduate. And the only person that's left is that advisor. So um, we really need to know who that chapter advisor is for every single student chapter. Um, what your federal employer tax ID number is, whether you're in the United States or uh, outside of the United States, you have something that identifies you as a corporation. And we need to know what that is. Because again, I have to report that to the IRS to make sure you're included in our group ruling. When you incorporated and is it current? I don't need a copy of it. Um, just make sure it's current. Um, where are you falling? Are you under the WAI group ruling or are you under um, the college or university exemption? And this is basically what this section is asking. Um, and if you've changed your bylaws or your articles of incorporation in the last calendar year, uh, I need to have a current copy of that stuff. So be sure you include that with your annual report. Then the next several pages, are you telling me, us, who your officers are? Uh, name, your WAI number, and if you need that number or roster, you can always contact Rory Ainbinder is right here on this call. Um, and she can get you a chapter roster. Um, so if you need WAI numbers, you can call us, you can email us and get WAI numbers. Uh, and that's that's helpful for us. If you don't have it and you just want to, you know, get your name and addresses in here, that's fine. We'll, we can look it up. Um, it's helpful, especially if you handwrite this stuff. Uh, if we can't read the writing or if maybe maybe somebody got married and their membership's under a different last name, you know, the membership number will help us pull that up and make sure that we're communicating with the right people for your chapter and membership chair and outreach chair. So we only ask on the, these forms who the required officers are. So you have to have a person in every single one of these roles. If you have additional chapter officers, please also let us know who they are and we will include them in to make sure that they get communications from us as well. Just uh, attach another sheet um, or put it in notes somewhere or an email even. Um, and then we want to hear about your activities and your plans, your activities from 2021 and your plans going forward in 2022. So first, membership recruitment events held in 2021. Just give a short narrative. And then what do you have planned for this year? Short narrative again. Um, back to the pandemic. We get <laughs> that nothing was normal last year. Still not normal in a lot of places this year. So, you know, this is not a place you're not going to get dinged. Nobody's going to, you know, tell you you didn't do enough. So, you know, if you just didn't have any events due to the pandemic, say that. Um, but why is the membership recruitment important? Because if you don't have membership recruitment events, eventually your chapter, you're not going to have enough people to run the chapter because the same old people are going to get tasked with all the work every year and eventually people burn out. So you wanna always be bringing new people into the chapter. Um, in other additional uh, webinars, we have talked about how we can help you with e-blasts. And, and so we can help you get the word out about your chapter, but you need to be sure that you have continual kind of efforts to grow your chapter, just to make sure that you have people that First of all, we move around. That's what WAI members do. We're, we are transitory sometimes. And um, so we just wanna be sure that everybody who wants to be involved is involved. 
And then educational or mentoring events. What did you do last year and what are you planning to do this year? And why is this important? Back to the IRS, we are an educational nonprofit. That is why the IRS said, okay, you don't have to pay taxes and people who donate to you, their donations are tax deductible because you're providing an educational service. So we need to tell them what we've done. So that's why this is really, really important. But it's just that simple, short and simple. Y'all don't, you don't have to write articles or narratives. It's not, none of this can get published in the magazine. Um, and then scholarships awarded last year and this year. And that's just, uh, you know, to keep us, so we understand what's, what's happening out there. But it also does go back to the IRS question of education and what services are we providing. We like to get an idea of whether or not you're gonna hold a girls in aviation day. These are simple, you either check yes or no. Um, and it's, ooh, it's fun. You can check both of them, um, which doesn't, which I don't dig. Um, and then we're trying to get an understanding. I'm sure you guys have all heard that there's a lot of perception out there that our membership and our chapters are just for pilots. Nope. Uh, in fact, so the membership survey we did last summer, and we do it every year, shows that our total um, membership, uh, just over 60% of our membership are pilots of any kind. So our membership truly is representative of all the uh, various jobs in the industry. And so we're trying to understand what kind of um, representation we have from all the various uh, professions in the chapter network. And does that vary from our total um, membership. Now, going forward, we probably won't ask this question because we'll be able to tell you with our new association management tool uh, who, what your profession is of each of your members. But right now, we don't know that. Our, we can't tell you how old your members are. We can't tell you demographics, racial or ethnic. We can't tell you professions. Um, but you guys, you see your folks face to face, you can give us some of that feedback. And so that's what we asked for. And guess what? That's it. Five pages, super easy. Um, and this last section doesn't have to be scientific. I mean, you know, your best guess, you know, your membership, um, sit around at your next membership meeting or your next zoom meeting, your next tour and get an understanding for who your membership is. You can hand, you can print this out, handwrite it, and email it. Take some pictures of it and email it in. Totally fine. Um, but it's five easy pages, and it should help you make sure that you get have your stuff together, you know, for your chapter for the year, uh, and make sure that we're communicating with all the people we should be communicating. Um, so that's it. It's mm -hmm. I suspect it's easier than you guys might have thought going into this. Um, we do ask that if you haven't been communicating with Rory about your roster, we do ask after you fill out the forms that you also include a roster of your chapter members so that we know that we are including, for example, uh, last night you guys should have all received an invitation. If you're registered for conference and you're a member of a chapter, you would have received an email inviting you to the chapter members reception at conference. But if your roster is not up to date, we don't necessarily know who to invite. So having a good roster for who's part of your uh, membership uh, gives us the ability to invite all the right people. And then just a reminder to you, did you pay the $135 administrative fee? And here again, this is actually a clickable link. You can actually click here and pay your annual administrative fee by credit card here. So that's it. Um, is it, was it easier than you guys thought? Simpler, less intimidating? Or was it about what you expected? I know a lot of people on this call have already done it. Um, do you have any questions? Oh, there's chat, there's a chat. Let me look at the chat. Okay. So the only question I see, Jacqueline, um, if we have members who do things that aren't listed here, such as 3D printing for aviation or aviation attorney, yes, absolutely let us know. Absolutely. Uh, that's really important. Um, our strength 
honestly, one of our one of our strengths as a whole organization is that we include so many different professions. Um, Cherry Farmer, you know, Jacqueline, um, somebody's got some cool donkeys. Um, whatever it is you do, your members do in aviation, we want to hear about it. Um, also, another thing we do with this, so we will go in and we will glean nuggets, so best practices and ideas. So if you guys held a fundraiser and you want to talk about it, if you had some activities that um, other chapters might benefit from, we actually put together a list of all of the activities. We don't put anybody's name next to it. We don't um, you know, call anybody out. But if you had a fundraiser that was a trivia night, we're going to put that on a list and we're going to give that to everybody so that if a chapter is looking for things to do, they can you know, learn from what other chapters are doing. Um, so I see a hand up. Ashley Ringer, do you have any questions? Um, I had difficulty <clears throat> with the, the uh, I guess, careers, like the percentages when you tried to type in a percent, it just kept defaulting to like a thousand. <laughs> okay, so that's clearly a user error right here. Um, let me fuss with it and I will, by the end of the day, the new one will be up on the website. Well, I had it come up too that um, I tried to survey my chapter and then like some were kind of had the same thing of like, well, I'm none of these as like, would it be better if it was like fill in or it, I don't know if. Got 153 chapters. And so if I had a fill in from all 153 chapters, we'd have to hire more people just to understand that answer. Um, okay. Because honestly, 80%, maybe 90% of your members fall into one of these. So um, yeah, there, there will be outliers, but sure, let us know for sure. I'll, I'll make an other line and you can let us know. Hey, Molly, um, I think the other line would be super helpful and something that I did last year because it was my my first full year as a president, um, is I actually use SurveyMonkey. Um, you can do free surveys um, through there as long as you only ask for certain information. You know, if you get more elaborate, it starts to cost money. And um, I used it as an opportunity, not only to poll the audience as to what category they fell into, but also just kind of see how we're doing. You know, I included questions like, how'd you hear about us? You know, what's your preferred method of interaction? Um, <clears throat> I've actually got the results right here, so I'm looking at it. Um, how often do you participate? You know, is it too much? Do you want more? Do you want less? And it was, it was really, really useful. So, um, just kind of a, a tip from a newbie, um, yep. the Sur survey monkey survey helped a lot. Survey monkey is free up to five questions. So at least that used to be the, the cutoff. I, you know, this, they changed I did, their I policies did 10 and it was free actually. No, Ooh. I think I did 15. Oh my goodness. Then it has changed. No, it was 10. Yeah. So I did 10 and it was free, but like I said, you, you couldn't get too complicated with the, the question and answers. Cause then it started to cost money. Yeah. Um, so I did have to go back and kind of change some things, but, um, it was very insightful and, and free. <laughs> cool. Very, very cool. Uh, and yeah, Katie Frost, they've used Google forms. And I know a lot of chapters use Google Forms too. That's free. You know, if you have a lot of chapters have set up their email addresses with using Gmail. And so you have access to the Google suite of stuff. And uh, Google Forms is one of those things. So yeah, lots of tools. Use technology. Put your technology to work for sure. Um, Rory and others are, are having a conversation about rosters. And Rory is really responsive, unlike me, who it could take, you know, three months to, for me to get back to you, especially right now. Um, Rory is very responsive and she is at R Ainbinder, so R-A-I-N-B-I-N-D-E-R at WAI.org. And if you just fire her a quick email and ask her for your roster, she can get it to you. And she can make changes too, so. So what I like to do is send me the email with your chapter name and number, and then I'll send you a roster, look it over, highlight what needs to be changed and tell me what, 
what if the person is deleted or new or whatever it is you're looking for, different last name, and then send it back to me. I'll make all the updates and I will send you the most current roster. Then. So um, also one, one other kind of a nuance to that. So only WAI members who are active can be members of your chapter. So if you have an inactive member, they're technically not a member of your chapter. Um, and by, it, by active, I mean they're, they're not up for renewal. Uh, and it goes back to that insurance question, right? Our insurance covers WAI members and WAI chapter activities and chapters are made up under our insurance definition, chapters are made up of WAI members. So if you have a member that's inactive, that's holding an activity at a girls in aviation day and somebody gets hurt, we're going to have an insurance problem. So there's a logical reason for all of this. Nobody's getting rich off of your administrative fee. I promise you that it's all going to insurance. In fact, it doesn't cover the cost of insurance. Um, it just goes towards the cost of insurance. Um, and we're, we're, we're even adding right now. Um, so fun fact, uh, we all know that WAI is not covered for uh, flight activity, right? Aircraft flight activity. Well, there's a chance that all insurance companies consider drones aircraft. So lots of us have used drones at Girls in Aviation Day, for example. So we are working on our insurance to make sure that all of our drone activity is covered. I guarantee you that's gonna cost more. So uh, back to the $135, that really just goes towards the cost of being sure we're all covered. So I don't see any hands up. Have we any other, oh, hey, Katie. Hey, I have a question. So I know like each chapter, you know, if chapter, as you're talking about membership, you know, they have the, WAI membership and then a lot of chapters have their own local chapter like fee or whatever to become yes. a member of their chapter Dues, yep 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 so I know that it can vary from chapter to chapter what do you either recommend or what do you usually see for chapters like do you usually have it like where they pay it at the same time I'm just thinking because we have a lot of collegiate age students um in this area so I'm just wondering do we say you know let's say they want to become a new member do we say you know here's your dues as a local chapter and then here's your dues at the corporate level? Like, well, any advice on that? So th that's a really good question. And we get a lot of confusion at headquarters uh, over this issue. So there will be, we'll probably get a hundred questions a year. I already, I already paid my dues. Why do I have to pay this WAI fee? Because they paid a chapter due or flip that. Um, I paid WAI, I didn't, doesn't that cover my dues with my chapter? So it's a really good question it's for you guys to be really clear with your members on. You've got to be sure that they're taking care of their dues with WAI and they can do that online. It's really easy to do, super simple. They have their membership number and their passwords and stuff. And if they don't, they can contact us and we can help them do that. Um, most of our members now are under um, auto renew. So the only thing, the only place that gets you know, a little bit of a hiccup is if somebody's credit cards expired and you got a new number, stuff like that. So, um, so that's one amount. And it depends whether you're an individual or a student or you know whatever, or even lifetime, you know. And then most chapters charge dues, annual dues. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. And we don't tell you how to do that. Do that the way that makes sense for your chapter that you want to administer it. Um, a lot of chapters will go January to January. The dues are generally relatively low for a chapter, $10, $20 a year, enough to help the chapter pay this administrative fee, pay for a uh, mailbox, you know, if you've got a web hosting, you know, there's, you might have a thousand dollars total in a year of administrative costs. You might have 
250. You know, I, I really don't know. So whatever you need to cover, that's usually what those dues cover. A lot of chapters make students free. Um, it's just up to you guys, whatever you need to do. A lot of chapters um, devote some time to fundraising so that they can cover those students. You, you know, um, there are chapters who their fundraising game is so good that their corporate members, the chapter's corporate members, uh, cover all their administrative fees. And so they don't charge dues at all to their members. Issue with that, if you are not financially invested, you may not be invested enough to keep commitments on showing up to meetings. And, you know, so a 10 or $20 dues doesn't really hurt a lot of people. Most people, um, if it does, you can always, you know, make arrangements for that. Maybe somebody can sponsor that, that person. Um, but people generally show up when there's a small fee. So they're invested, right? They have skin in the game. So um, that's, I didn't give you a concrete answer because you need to do what makes sense for you. My only counsel is make sure that you're clear that there is one chapter amount and there is another WAI chapter amount or um, total amount. See, even I'm confused. Um, there's a headquarters amount and then there's a chapter amount. So, and never the two shall cross, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't collect your chapter dues. Um, you can collect WAI dues and then send them on to us. In fact, some of the forms allow you to do that and that's just confusing. So I think that confuses it more personally. But if you wanted, if that's easier for you to do, knock yourself out, we'll support you on that. Thank you, appreciate it. So any, any other questions? Allison's looking spiffy in her uniform. Have any questions? Sorry, I just walked, just got to my hotel. <laughs> awesome, you look great. <laughs> um, actually, um, for Girls in Aviation Day, I kind of chimed in at the last second when you were talking about this, but did you say, um, is it just volunteers or everyone in attendance or something needs to be a member or what did you say about that? No, so your chapter members, you can, you, your chapter members are limited to WAI members. To be a member of your chapter, a person must be a WAI member. Uh, Girls in Aviation Day, another story. So often if your event is, is large, Stars of the North will, on, average have 2000 attendees. So they need two, maybe 300 volunteers. They're gonna go outside of their chapter for volunteers for that. Um, so that's fine. Um, you are insured for Girls in Aviation Day, but your chapter members need, so you know, are only active WAI members. We can use your help in making, you know, contacting those. That's one of the reasons that once a quarter, Chelsea sends out a, um, rebate report that tells you how much you have in your rebate account of, you know, WA buck, I bucks, and she's going to send you a roster. And that roster is going to show you who's active and who's not. And, you know, to be a WAI chapter, you have to have in the United States, if you're a regular chapter, a non-student chapter, you have to have 10 members, a minimum of 10 members, and they must all be WAI active members. So, um, student members, international chapters are six uh, minimum. So is that know. separate from, is that 10 members separate from your six officers? Nope, that okay. your officers are included in that number. Yep. Yeah, and we have chapters all over the world who are, you know, literally there are six females in aviation in a given country and all six of them are WAI members and they are the chapter. Um, and then you have some places, Dallas is several hundred people, the uh, District of Columbia, Stars of the North, California, um, Jacqueline's done a fantastic job of building a, a, a good sized chapter 
Um, so, you know, small or large or anywhere in between, you know, that's just great. It's just, we only count the active WAI members. So April 30th, eat, just email it. It doesn't have to be fancy. You can fill it out on the computer. You can print it and fill it in. Totally fine. Email it in. Write on there, use my rebate money. If you don't want to send in credit card and you know you've got the balance or you have a question, send an email. Uh, but keep it simple. That's, that's the key, I think, to chapter management and organization is keep it simple. Keep your expectations simple. Um, you can always go grand, but start simple. So if there's no other questions, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. And yeah, Kelly, stay online and we'll, if you have any questions, I'm going to turn off the recording. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for being here. Hey, see you in Nashville. <laughs>